Hi and hello all. Let us talk about Schottenbaumann reaction. In this reaction, an amine reacts with an acid chloride. This is acid chloride and forms an amide in presence of a base. Presence of base is very important. Otherwise, the yield will be very low. Now let us have a look at the mechanism of the reaction. The nitrogen has a lone pair. That means this is going to be the negative center in this reaction. And this carbonyl carbon atom is going to be the positive center. As this oxygen is electronegative, it pulls the electron towards it. That means the carbon is going to have a delta positive charge, a slight positive charge on this car carbon, while a corresponding negative charge, delta negative charge on this oxygen. So now this carbon is the positive center. The first step, this lone pair is going to stay in between this nitrogen and this carbon. That's going to be a new bond between this nitrogen and this carbon. So we can represent that with a curved arrow like this. And when there is going to be a new bond to that carbon, an old bond has to break. Let us represent that bond breaking by this curved arrow. This curved arrow means the two electrons in this pi bond is going to stay on oxygen rather than in between this oxygen and this carbon. The bond, the pi bond is breaking here. Let us copy down the whole thing and try to make sense of the curved arrows. This curved arrow means there is going to be a new bond between this nitrogen and this carbon. Before that, let me write down the edge uh, separately. Otherwise, some auto correction problems will be there. And there's going to be a new bond with the expense of this lone pair. This lone pair is responsible for that new bond. When a new bond forms here, an old bond will break at the same time. This H is auto correction. Actually, there will be a negative charge on that oxygen. Let me represent that. Look at this bond. One electron belongs to this nitrogen and one electron belongs to this carbon. Both electrons belong to nitrogen. Now only one electron belongs to nitrogen. That means nitrogen lost one of its electrons. So it will have a positive charge. Now look at this bond. The two electrons are on oxygen now. That means this carbon lost one electron, but it gained one electron through this bond. So when you consider this carbon, it gains an electron and it's also losing an electron. That means there is no net change of charge on this carbon atom and uh, this will remain neutral. How about this oxygen? In this pi bond, one electron belongs to oxygen and one electron belongs to this carbon. Both electron is on oxygen now. That means oxygen is getting an extra electron. Oxygen was neutral. Now it's it, it has an extra electron, so it will have a negative charge, a formal negative charge. Now this negatively charged oxygen can pick up this proton. That means there is going to be a new bond between this oxygen and this hydrogen and the old bond will break. The two electrons in between this nitrogen and hydrogen is going to stay on this oxygen. That is what indicated by this curved arrow. Now let's copy down the whole thing and try to make sense of the curved arrows. So this curved arrow means there's going to be a new bond between this oxygen and this hydrogen. This H was auto correction and this bond is going to break. So the positive charge will not be there. This bond is going to break. So this becomes an OH. Whenever we have a situation like this where you have an OH on one carbon, and there is a good leaving group group on that same carbon. The leaving group leaves and there's going to be a new bond between this oxygen and this carbon. There's going to be a pi bond here. As the new bond forms, the Cl minus will leave. This leaving group will leave. Let us indicate with that a curved arrow. So Cl leaves a Cl minus. Let us copy it and make the changes in that structure. So there's going to be a new bond here at the expense of this uh, lone pair. At the same time, this old bond will break. Okay, this HCl is an auto correction that H will not be there. There will be a Cl minus. So Cl minus leaves. And at the same time, the formal charge on this oxygen is positive. The new bond is forming. The two electrons belong to oxygen. But in this case, only one in this pi bond, only one electron belongs to oxygen. So oxygen lost one of its electrons, so it will have a positive charge. Look at this chlorine uh, in this bond. In this bond, one electron belongs to chlorine, one electron belongs to carbon. But both electrons in this bond is going to be on this chlorine. Chlorine is getting an extra electron, electron of that carbon too. So chlorine will have a negative charge. A neutral species, when a neutral species gets an extra electron, it will have a negative charge. Now what we have is a, is a protonated amide and this uh, deprotonation can take place in many ways. We could show it as minus Cl minus, as Cl, to indicate that Cl minus is leaving in this step. Okay. Now what we have is a protonated amide. Deprotonation can take place in many ways, but we have a good base in the system itself. 
our starting material amine is a good base so the amine can pick up this proton let's show the lone pair on nitrogen there is going to be a new bond between this nitrogen and hydrogen at the same time this old bond is going to break both electrons in this bond is going to be on oxygen rather than in between oxygen and hydrogen let us make the changes here so there is going to be a new bond between this oxygen and hydrogen using this lone pair and the old bond is breaking so the h was auto correction and now this is deprotonated this amide is now free of amide it's deprotonated while the amine is protonated as it's the base and it will have a nitrogen will have a positive charge so now we have the product now what is the role of base here we didn't use naoh yet now deprotonation is um, of amine the starting material is required why otherwise the first step will not happen this step will happen only when we have a free amine. The amine is not free now, it's a, in a protonated form. To deprotonate it, we need base. So this OH- minus will pick up this proton and this hydrogen-nitrogen bond will break. Both electrons will remain on nitrogen. So this means there is going to be a new bond between this oxygen and hydrogen, that extra H+. So there is going to be a new bond between this oxygen and hydrogen. At the same time, this bond will break. The nitrogen will become neutral and this is nothing but water now we can show it as here as minus h2o and this is nothing but the free amine this amine can react again uh, with acid chloride and continue the reaction to form amide here the product usually what happens we have uh, amine and acid chloride in an organic layer and oh minus or naoh in aqueous layer when the reaction happens so OH- minus does not readily react with uh, acid chloride it rather will act just as a base to pick up this proton so that the reaction can continue and amide can form at the end in a good yield so amine acid chloride are in the organic layer and NaOH or the base OH- minus is in the aqueous layer such a condition is usually referred as Schorenbaumann condition so let us go over this mechanism once again the lone pair on this nitrogen is going to stay in between this carbon and this nitrogen and or in other words there is going to be a new bond between this carbon and this nitrogen and uh, that brings a formal positive charge on ni nitrogen and a negative charge formal negative charge on this oxygen oxygen picks up this proton and nitrogen becomes neutral uh, this state and uh, when you have a system like a leaving group on this carbon and that's on the same carbon we have an OH this could happen this lone pair could uh, make a pi bond here and the pi bond is forming and while uh, Cl minus leaves. Okay, now we have a protonated amide. As our starting material amine is a base, it will pick up a proton and deprotonation will happen and we will have our amide. But the reaction is not yet over because our starting material got protonated and its lone pair is not available to attack acid chloride. Now, that's where we need our base NaOH the OH- minus picks up this proton and free the amine. So that kid can react, continue to react and uh, form amide and get a good yield for this reaction. Hope you understood Schorten-Bowman reaction and uh, its mechanism. Thank you.